Banked corners are nothing new in the sport of Formula One. In fact, right back at the beginning of the World Championship, the Indy 500 was part of the calendar. And since then, you've seen all sorts of circuits featuring different banked corners, such as Interlagos, the final turn itself is slightly banked, forming part of a much larger, larger oval track no longer used in motor racing. And we've seen some much bigger bankings over the years, such as that at the Automobile Verkers und Übungsstrasse, or the Avis for short, in Berlin. That's super steep banking that was used just a couple of times in the World Championship. Then, of course, there's the granddaddy of them all, the Monza banking. Still there, off in the woods, no longer used for motor racing, but occasionally used for rallying. Talking of Monza, you may remember that famous 1966 MGM film, Grand Prix, and the cars of Scott Stoddart and Pete Aaron up on the banking, and that brilliant monologue talking about the effects of a banked corner on a Formula One car, even before Downforce was a feature. The film was in 1966, Wings became a thing in Formula One in 1967, and those cars being forced hard on the banking by the centripetal forces. Well, we've seen the effect of that at Indianapolis in 2005 as well, how difficult it is for a modern Formula One to go through a banked corner. And joining me to talk a little bit more in detail about the effects of banking on Formula One cars is Craig Scarborough. Craig, you've been looking into this in a bit more detail, haven't you, and what the effects on a modern Formula One car through a banked corner really are. Yep, so as always, I've done some drawings. <laughs> so what we have here is a Formula One car going through a corner, you're looking at it head on. But the benefit you're getting here, it's all to do with the tires. Now the basic law or the physics with tires is the tire will give you more grip depending on how much load it has being pushed down on it through into the tarmac. So with that you have gravity, the weight of the car and downforce nowadays. And then counteracting that in a flat corner you have the centrifugal centripedal forces which is this blue arrow here that's trying to slide the car out across the track. And as a result you then get a net force which comes slightly at an angle and that is what you have in terms of load on the tyres that affects all of the car. When you come on to banking, I've done another drawing. So when you go, go on to banking, the downforce is still working straight down through the car. The centripetal forces are still working horizontally through to the centre of the corner. But the resultant force now is much more vertical. So that centripetal force is partly transferred into a vertical force, gives you much more load through the tyres, much more grip. And this is what allows you to corner so fast around bankings at the cost of the added stresses on the car. And those added stresses are really significant because it's not a case of running on an oval. Sandvoort, for example, is a road course. There's left and right-hand corners. There's a left-hand banking and a right-hand banking. So you can't set the car up with stagger or any of the IndyCar-style NASCAR tricks that you want, might see. But it also, that vertical force is pushing the cars right down into the banking and you can really see them sparking, particularly through the final corner at Sandvoort. And that's because the cars are being forced into the ground. And Formula One cars, a a lot of the suspension movement isn't actually in the arms here or in the dampers and, and torsion bars inside the car. It's actually in the side walls of the tyre. And that's one of the reasons why Pirelli have selected the hardest compound tyres for this circuit. So they understand what the effects of this circuit are from the banking. But even then, the cars through that corner, they're being thrown and forced down so hard. That's just putting such forces through these suspension arms. Yeah, we're seeing forces of over 5G, closer to 6G, a fairly sustained period through the bankings. As you say, we have the tyres, there's now the harder rear tyre, the, the stronger construction rear tyre, and the suspension, as you say. So all of the joints in the suspension, the hub, the wheel bearings, they're all under the greatest load that they'll probably see, certainly the greatest sustained load they'll see throughout the year at this circuit on the banks. Well, as Scott Stoddart said on that bank in the 1966 film Grand Prix. He was really worried that the banking would just force the cars down onto the floor. It would shake the cars to pieces. Well, the Zandvoort bankings are much smoother than Monza ever was. However, those forces are still going through the car. And it could mean as the race weekend goes on, we could see some unreliability from the cars because they're just being pounded by those two banked corners. And the other thing to think about is going into next season, into 2022, when we adopt low profile tyres in Formula One, that challenge is going to be revisited once again. And I'm fascinated to see how the tyre companies are going to deal with that.